You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Thank you for... <laughs> Paul just said we're losing the muster. I Well, I'm losing the muster. Uh, right now I'm looking for a question for our part 107 yeah. segment here. But yeah, It's I, just I, funny, I, it kind of made me <laughs> go... <laughs> we need a beer. <laughs> and then I flub my words. Anyways, thank you for your grace and listening, even though words get flubbed. This is episode 899, and as always, we are very, very grateful that you're hanging with us today. We are grateful. Anyone who left us a review, we're very grateful for that as well. If you could take 30 seconds out of your day and leave us a review on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you download shows, please do that. We would really, really, really appreciate that. Also, just a heads up. Look, have you ever thought about offering drone mapping and you're like, yeah, I want to expand my business. I want to get into construction, but you're not familiar with the deliverables. Maybe you want to get into surveying with drones, but you don't understand what surveyors are looking for in their output plot or Alta surveys. Or maybe you're like, hey, I want to do drone mapping for marketing and mapping film locations for our local film commissions. Or maybe I want to do interactive mapping for marketing of hotels and conference properties. Whatever it is, what if you knew how to create drone maps? Better yet, what if you knew how to acquire the right imagery to get the right data? Because you can go in and process, and once you learn processing of photogrammetry, you're going to realize that if you didn't get the images right the first time, you're going to have to go back out there and shoot them again and again. So wouldn't it be important to know the intricate relationship between image acquisition and processing? And wouldn't you want to know how to process those images to have survey grade accurate models? And how do you even verify the accuracy? How do you know what deliverables to make? How do you understand the systematic means of processing imagery to get the DSMs, DTMs, those are digital surface models and digital terrain models. And how do you know how to get orthomosaics? Well, if you can't answer any of those questions, or maybe you're like, hey, I would like to know how to get deliverables for drone mapping and add that to my business, then you need to sign up for the Austin Mapping class. It's three days, two days of Pix4D processing and one day of image acquisition taught by me, yours truly. Yes, I will be there. You can meet me and hear some of the stories that uh, I can't tell on this show. Well, for that and so much more, go to bit.ly forward slash Austin Mapping. That's bit.ly forward slash Austin mapping. So bit, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Austin mapping. Hello, Ron and Paul. This is Joe again, Skytrack UAV, Omaha, Nebraska. Hey, question for you. I was thinking, okay, you got the Osmo. You can put on the R3 camera on it for my Inspire. Is there an Osmo that can work with other more complex cameras like say the X-T2, Z30, got jobs where it would be difficult to fly under but it would be freaking awesome to be able to have a handheld unit to uh, be able to maybe do some thermal or possibly zoom and I don't necessarily need to fly but having that um, Steady camera would be freaking awesome. Uh, just thought, give me your opinion, please, if that's even a possibility or an option. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye bye. Golly, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Instagram. <laughs> Energy is back. <laughs> Oh my word! Oh. Anyways, Joe, you're on a roll. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> Joe, he's on the Joe. He's the question <laughs> asker. He's got all the questions. He does. That's three in a row. Appreciate it, Joe. Really, really do. Thanks for taking the time to get those in. Go to ask drone you if you want to be like Joe and get three of your questions on in a row. Be like Joe. Three questions in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Just made that up. <laughs> All right. So he wants a handheld. Well, he specifically says an Osmo for more sophisticated cameras. What do you think? What would you do? Oh, Pull out the I'm, Ronin? I'm re- refraining from all the accents right now that I want to use. Um, <laughs> yeah, have a little fun. Uh, it's okay. Um, 
So look, he's he wants to get the buttery smooth footage, right? We're all familiar with the buttery smooth, but few people are not familiar with the difference between Irish cream butter and regular butter. Irish cream's even smoother. Anyway, um, so how do you get the Irish cream buttery smooth? Wow, well, new level of buttery smooth. <laughs> you can always, I was trying to teach Gotta this grow, to Sarah progress. yesterday. I was like, you have to realize in the world, everything you see, there is an opportunity to do it better because they are not doing it to the best of their ability. And she was just like, wow, what do you mean? I'm like, well, the level of depth is never that deep. You can always go deeper. And if you can figure out a way to communicate that depth in a way of, of understanding in layman's terms, you're going to be set. And she was like, whoa. Anyway, that was a switch track. <laughs> um, all right. So a couple things really quick. So he's like, I want zoom and I want thermal. Unfortunately, unless he uses an M210 with a top mount, the Z30 will not have a gimbal to mount it to. So Chris, he's wanting handheld. Yeah, but he could mount it to an M210 on the top and hold and the just M210 carry it around. Oh, okay. and carry it around. Gotcha. Option number so one. So there's not really an Osmo for this solution. There probably. is not an Osmo, but there is a Ronin S. And the Ronin S is amazing because you can put any type of camera up to about nine and a half pounds on the gimbal as long as you balance the gimbal. Now, there is a balance test inside of the uh, the app itself, and we have an entire video on why the Ronin S is the best for capturing cinematic movements. You can check that out on our YouTube page. Um, and I have to say, the Ronin S, so like if you had, let's say you have a thermal camera, right, and you have a FLIR Tau 2, okay? You could set up the FLIR Tau 2 and a battery in a little, you know, 3D printed box or something and then mount that to the Ronin S and now you have stabilized thermal footage, okay? Voila, cool. not that hard. Ronin S is like $700. Um, so six, we're really in the ballpark of an Osmo. Yes, 100%. I mean, could, yeah. Now, he can't use the uh, X-T2 or X-T camera. That's not going to work unless, you know, the old X-T camera and Spire 1, he's holding that around like a gimbal. And people did that. You know, it's not. It's nothing new. It's creative. Um, anyway, long story short, uh, he can also, as far as zoom is concerned, let's say he takes off the FLIR Tau 2 or the FLIR View Pro, uh, where there are, there are a lot of options for handheld FLIR cameras and you can rent them online and then you can have stabilized thermal footage. I also have the FLIR 1, uh, it's, it, the FLIR 1 plugs into your phone, but it's a 156 PI sensor, very small, not good for commercial stuff. Um, that being said, uh, if you were to put, let's say, his Sony camera or Canon camera with a kit lens or a zoom lens on the Ronin, he could also get zooming shots from his Ronin. It's going to take a little bit more work and effort than he's used to with an Osmo, but he can still get zooming shots and get beautiful shots. In addition, you can also use the Ronin like you did with the Osmo and control the movement with your finger. It's not the same user interface. But it still works. That which is very cool. It makes it much easier. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, to get that um, Irish buttery smooth. <laughs> Did you look up? I looked it up. <laughs> so, you know, that's what uh, the keto guy says. He says uh, for intermittent fasting, make your coffee and pour Irish cream butter in there. Really? Yeah, because he says, and then your body has enough fat for the whole day, so it stops accepting fats. Yeah, so it uses a higher butter fat content than mm -hmm. the average American butter. So it translates into richer, creamier texture. So delicious. There you go. Make macaroni and cheese for your kids with that and watch what happens. Well, and if you go with the, um, <laughs> let's see, this particular company, Carrie. Uh, that's the one I buy. Apparently, Kerrygold. is it seriously? Yeah, Kerrygold. Kerry, Kerrygold, yeah. They said, well, they use grass-fed Kerrygold cows. Well, grass-fed is actually a big difference because there's more, um, what is it called? Uh, the Palm Wonderful Juice. What is it called? Uh, antioxidants. More antioxidants in grass-fed beef and also more nutrients in grass-fed beef. I, did, I only know that because of Paul Taylor. He's a big proponent of the grass-fed stuff. And sure. there's for obvious reasons. There's yeah. huge benefits to it. Yeah. Huge benefits. Uh, and, and artery health and blood health and heart health is a big one. So, yeah, so have higher quality butter because butter makes everything better, right? Yeah. Just don't do the margarine crap. Don't eat the plastic. It's so funny. I remember my stepmom growing up like, I can't believe it's not butter. There's a spray. And then in college, she'd be like, do you remember when they had spray butter? Now, how can that could be healthy for you? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> On that note, that is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Adronio. Adronio.